All right, 39, we have a doctor that uses a new diagnostic test to indicate whether a patient has a certain disease. The doctor will prescribe medication for the patient if the doctor believes the patient has the, the disease as indicated by the diagnostic test. The situation is similar to using a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis to decide whether to prescribe the medication. The hypotheses can be stated as follows. HO, the HO, the patient does not have the disease. HA, HA, the patient has the disease. So which of the following best describes the power of the test? Okay, so let's remember what the power of the test even means. Remember that um, the power of the test, basically the power, power is on basically the probability. It, it, it's, a pro, it's a value of pro, the probability. Power is the probability. And power is the probability that the inference method, met an inference method will essentially come to the right conclusion. That's kind of the simplest way to think about it. So the, the higher that probability, the greater the chance um, you're gonna have coming to the right conclusion. So that's what I would just say. You think power, power is a good thing, you know. Um, you just think of power as being a good thing. It means, you know, the, the, the greater the power, the more, the greater the test, the better the test. So when you do a test, you wanna come to the right conclusion. So that's all there is to it. Power is basically the probability that the test will come to the right conclusion. So, See which of these would work. The probability that the new test is better than the older test indicate whether nope, nope. That's you know that they're they're overcomplicating that. B the probability that the new test indicates a disease in a patient who has a disease. Yeah, see, so it comes to the right conclusion. That's what we want. That that's exactly what power is in this case. So that the answer would be B. Let me just look. Let me just look up for the other ones to, to see if there's something for, for maybe why. So I can explain why it wouldn't be any of these. The probability the new test indicates the disease. So that's you know that, that's the opposite of power. That would be like you know, that would be something maybe weakness or something. That would be that's not what you want. So it's not C. Does not indicate the probability that the print does not indicate again. Yeah, nope, not not C or D. The probability that the new test does not indicate the disease. Yeah, these are all yeah these are no. We don't want that. But again, power power is a good thing when you're doing statistics, and it's just basically the probability of coming to the right to the right conclusion. All right, final multiple choice. To investigate the relationship between age and preference for two mayor mayoral candidates in an upcoming election, a random sample of city residents was surveyed. The residents were asked which candidates they preferred, and each resident, each resident was classified into one of three age groups. The test statistic for the appropriate hypothesis test was 3.7408. Approximately, what is the probability that the observed responses would be as far or farther from the expected responses if there is no association between age group and preference? So this is just the, the p-value of the test. Because again, when you're conducting an inference test, um, what we our p-value basically says the probability is basically telling us the probability that we would get results as extreme or more extreme that the of that the data is showing if we assume that no hypothesis is true. And again, so if that p-value is very small, then it's basically saying that these results are you know unlikely to occur. You know, so it's more it's it's probably it's probably more probable. Or it's probably more smarter to, to, to assume that the null hypothesis is incorrect. So in this case, we're going to be looking at a chi-squared test for independence. This is going to be our chi-squared statistic. So we want to see what's the probability of our chi-squared statistic being greater than 3.7408. And we just need our degrees of freedom here. Degrees of freedom will be number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. So rows minus one times columns minus one. So how do we figure this out? Well, let's let's just make a hypothetical table of what this could look like. So we're talking about three groups. The age groups are broken into three, into, you know, broken down. The ages are broken down into three age groups. Let's just call them age group A, B, and C. Cross the rows. And we're looking at two candidates. So let's just have candidate one and candidate two. 
And in here, you would have your data value. You would have, you know, your observed count. So you see you have one, two, three rows. So three minus one times two columns. So times two minus one. So we would have just two times one. So two, our degrees of freedom would be two. So now let's just punch this in our calculator. Bang. And actually, let me draw a little visual so you know exactly what's going on with this thing. And remember, chi-square distribution is pretty weird looking. I don't even know if that's what it would look like. But we're looking at the area to the right of a chi-square value of 3.7408. It's always one-sided. It's always just greater than. We want to find this p-value. So back to the calculator, old school style. Let's go to stat. And actually, no, let's go to distribution. Chi, so let's go chi-square CDF. Enter the lower bound, which will be 3.7408, comma, followed by the upper bound. Just make it like a billion or a zillion, very large. Comma, followed by the degrees of freedom. Enter. And bang. There's your p-value. Your p-value is going to be about 0.154. So that is your answer. That's the answer to this problem is B. All right. And there we go. You're done for the with the multiple choice section. On to the free response. I'll take a break. So I hope this helps. Good luck.